Welcome to Bayesian Statistics, the posterior distribution for the Poisson random variable. Okay, so, so far we've been talking about counts over time, and this is a Poisson random variable. It takes on counts, right, because it's a count over time, 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, all the way up. You know, they're all whole numbers. And it has a distribution function that's given here. And then we were talking about, well, how would we put information into this distribution? Well, lambda here is its mean. And if we can put information in about lambda in the prior, then that will give us a way to influence uh, or um, direct the probability in the right area that incorporates our prior information. Okay, so here we go. Let's start putting this together and we'll see what happens. So again, we're going to need a likelihood and part of uh, everybody knows so far, if you've been paying attention, that the, you need a prior and you need a likelihood to get a posterior. So for the Poisson, the likelihood of the data is like this. So the likelihood of the data given lambda is going to be the probability that I would see this data, right? We have, it's the likelihood of the data. Uh, which are given by the lower cased x's. So the probability that x1, the random variable, equals the little value x1. Capital a random variable x2 equals the value little x2. Uh, or the random variable xn equals little value xn. Well, these commas are in there, meaning and, which means that's the intersection, right? So we can just replace those and we have intersections. And then since they're IID, which means they're independent, that means we can multiply them together. So we can look at each one individually and just multiply those probabilities together. And this only works if they're independent. Uh, which means each one of the distribution functions that I had before, I can just take and just add a little subscript to each of the X's, and bingo, I have it in this fashion. Uh, put it together, and here we are. So I have lambda to the sum of the XI, E to the minus N lambda, over uh, X1 factorial, X2 factorial, dot, 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 XN factorial, and these are all multiplied together. And this will be a massive number usually, so... Don't, don't really get too panicky about it. Um, but uh, this is the piece that we're looking for. Okay, so now we have it. We can go on and try to find the posterior distribution if we use a gamma distribution as our prior. Okay, so here we go. Suppose lambda is a gamma alpha beta and that x1 through xn are iid Poisson lambda, then the posterior distribution here, pi of lambda given the data, uh, we just plug in what we know here and we'll see that this is uh, our density from before and here is our likelihood. Put it all together and this is where we end up with there's a constant here that I'm going to leave as k, lambda alpha plus the sum of the xi minus 1 e to the minus lambda quantity beta plus n. Well, if I stare at this, this is a gamma distribution with a the first parameter, alpha, is alpha plus the sum of the xi, and the second parameter is beta plus n. Uh, so this is pretty easy to calculate. I mean, if you look at it, it's ridiculously easy to calculate. Uh, but we have to use, we'll use R to help us handle the gamma distribution function and calculate that for us. But the other pieces to put into it are pretty easy. Uh, so we have it. Here we are. So let's look at an example. Uh, here's everything uh, put together for us all on one slide. If you want to pause it and copy this down, this is the setup and this is the answer. Okay, so Alejandro is interested in the number of attempted hacks to a computer network per hour. He defines this uh, to be attempts to log in from outside the local area network. Um, and since all the machines, if you're coming into this, these machines, you have to go through a VPN if you're outside the local area network, which would register as a local area network. So he, it's clearly defined what it is. So it's clearly defined Bernoulli event, and he's counting the number of hack attempts in an hour, uh, definitely a Poisson random variable, uh, provided he samples in such a way that they're independent of each other. Um, so he thinks on any given hour, an average of nine attacks occur. So if he did this, he set uh, gamma 18.2 as the prior distribution for lambda since it has an expected value of nine, which is exactly what he thought, an average of nine. This isn't the only parameterization. This is the one that works, right? Uh, remember, this is lambda or alpha divided by beta is the mean. 
Okay, so now I have this information. He studies the design, so across the next two weeks, he randomly samples hours and looks at the attempted hacks per hour. This generates the following data. Here's our values. 12, 11, 15, 2, 9, 12, 13, and 10. So here's our data that he observes uh, from his, his particular uh, study here. Well, we don't want to stare at the numbers. Uh, let's break it down or summarize it for ourselves to help us out here. So we can turn this into, well, n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And if you add up all of these numbers, you will end up with 84. Okay? So we have all the pieces we need now here, right? We have our uh, prior distribution, we have which is alpha and beta. We have n. We have the sum of the xi. Our posterior distribution of lambda given the data is this. Start plugging things in. Alpha is 18. Uh, beta is 2 n is 8 and the sum of the xi is 84 so we'll end up with a gamma 102 10. okay now that we have this we can make inferences about things so uh one thing you might want to do is get a 95 percent credible interval for lambda well we can use q gamma here in r and to get this and here is the code to grab the 0 0.25 uh, quantile and the 97.5 quantile uh, from a gamma distribution with alpha equal to 102 and uh, beta equal to 10. And here we get the inf interval 8.316 to 12.272. So there's a 95% probability that the mean number of hacks per hour is between 8.316 and 12.21 or 272. Uh, we can also use this uh, to just go directly at the mean and the variance here. So here's the basic summary. I'm just using the alpha over beta formula from before and I'm plugging everything in here. Uh, this might come in handy later if you wanted to know, well, what is the posterior average? And I'll let you go and calculate that on your own. But uh, it, we've finally gotten to where we can take uh, our data and our prior information and turn it into a posterior and get some inferences off of it. In the next video, we're going to talk about uh, using it for prediction. And so, uh, and then we'll talk about some other issues that are associated with prior distributions. But so I will see you there.